asks a question about tendering by local authorities. And Gavin's contention would be that they should, they should be forced or persuaded to, to favour local companies over multinationals. Um, Simon? Picked up because you see two quick things. That's supported as a policy, and in practice, what the, ca the Cabinet Office is leading on that agenda. Francis Maud is leading very proactively on that agenda, trying to make sure that procurement, both by government, but also by local government, uh, favours SMEs. Um, and there are targets now set uh, in terms of increasing the number of SMEs and the proportion, and negotiations are happening across government departments uh, to seek to make sure that it isn't just the multinational tendering. So uh, if you have particular concerns, as well as working through the Northern Ireland Secretary, I would suggest specifically, maybe worth an FSB um, delegation and a, and a local authorities delegation going to see Francis Maud about the particular Northern Ireland situation. The second thing is that the government have accepted, the Treasury has accepted, Danny Alexander has accepted, that no uh, government contracts in future uh, should be given to companies who are not good corporate citizens. What we've discovered, if you look at government contracts and contracts of government agencies, and I suggest it might be worth local government doing it if they're not doing it fully already, is making sure that firms don't get the business if they don't pay their taxes, if they avoid paying their taxes, if they're using offshore tax havens, if they are uh, making sure that they so finance themselves that they're spending all their money on debt repayments, which are actually a fairly contrived form of debt repayment, which means that they reduce their tax liability. And that will mean that at least we get out of some of the, the international and multinational companies who are not good corporate contributors to the revenues of the UK not getting all the business. There have been huge numbers which have uh, been in that position. But often, uh, for example, um, private sector monopolies, suppliers of public services, which have had those contracts. And companies like Arkiva, which supply lots of the uh, telecommunications, paid no tax for years. I'm, I'm generalizing slightly. but So those two things. But what may be worth doing is formally local government and uh, assembly members going to see Francis Moore to sp specifically talk through the way that can be delivered better and more quickly in Northern Ireland. We, we do operate within the context of the European single market, and we, we can't f uh, overtly discriminate based on terms of the, the origin of the, of the company. But um, the way in which the contracts are designed can greater appeal to, to small, medium-sized um, businesses uh, tha than others. The other thing just to highlight is that mm. it's now increasingly the case in Northern Ireland that public sector con uh, contracts will have social clauses, particularly around things like uh, involvement of uh, those people who are long-term unemployed or numbers of apprenticeships that are taken on as part of the contracts. Um, public sector procurement, which is effectively what this question is about, is a sort of a morning seminar in itself. What we're actually looking at at the moment is this issue of main contractors being paid by taxpayers' money, i.e. from the local council or a government contract, and then the people below that contract not being paid for months on end. And it's amazing how many people find that uh, when they've got to pay the salaries, all the check signatories are there. But when it's paying a trade payment, they're very conveniently not available. And this sort of practice is this way of avoiding paying uh, small business bills, unfortunately, is a cultural thing. If it's legislated for, which it is to do with interest payments and so on, uh, the big business say, well, we'll pay the interest, the statutory interest this time, and we're going to think very carefully how we place the contract with next time. So you can't legislate to change culture to do with payment. But the stick and carrot of the government um, and councils saying, if you want these main contracts in the future, and you're going you're to have to pay your subcontractors in the same th up to 30-day period that we're going to pay you. And if they don't pay properly, then in the future they don't get the contracts. And that's the sort of approach. The re the, the, the we're all taxpayers, and we should be able to use our influence to make sure that there's a reasonable culture in business with the money that we pay to government when they're letting contracts. Thank you. <coughs> well, only just to briefly add that... Um, I, I think if you add up all the money that local councils spend, all the money that government spends, it's billions upon billions of pounds. And I think that along with a lot of other things that are happening in our society at the moment, there's a cultural change which is needed, which says if we're spending that amount of money through procurement,
we're actually going to make that money work in the interests of local people, of communities, and in the interests not of business, but in the interests of ordinary people. And that's a cultural change as well. as It's not about how much money you spend. You know, that leaves aside whether there's enough money being spent or not enough money being spent. But it's simply not good enough any, any longer for tendering simply to be driven by cost. You drive it down to the bottom, the lower the cost, they win the contract. And it's not acceptable anymore. And there's a cultural change that's needed here at a local level, a regional level, and indeed a national level. And there are difficulties with legislation and with the EU, but we have to overcome those because I think people are sick of it. I think they actually don't understand why politicians such as myself and others can't get a system which operates more fairly or more robustly in the interests of the community and not in the interests of what they see as unacceptable business practice. And that's the challenge for us.